Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. It's PJ. And we are back here in Phoenix, still in Phoenix. Uh, still actually facing the same guys we came out to see here, Pete, as we look over the down, lovely downtown Phoenix area. We're hoping to get a good home win against a team that's really had our number all season. And their record isn't quite as good as ours, and this is a divisional matchup that is really important. Uh, we don't want to get swept here because this puts us in a bad spot. If we're going to make these playoffs, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be first place. That's right. That's right. And this team <coughs> is hot on our heels. They're just a game behind us at 14 and 20. We're sitting at 15 and 19. Um, as Tommy stated, uh, it's a three-game set against the Sirloins this year, and the Sirloins have taken the first two games. So uh, we stand on the precipice of being swept. Um, if the Sirloins can win this game, they would move into a tie with us for first place. Um, whereas if the B-Wolves can take this one, they can put a little bit more space between them and sirloin, the Sirloins uh, and make it a two-game lead. Could, well, it's a, it's quite a lineup there. I mean, not the best contactors in the world, but they always got power and they could burn you if you if you let them. Uh, so you got to be careful when you throw. Uh, and if we could keep from making those mistakes, we could be right there in, in it with them. And... Um, yeah, so this is going to be this is going to be important. But let's tell you a little bit about that last game before we get in too far. Uh, as it's been custom of late, Pete, the Beagles get the offense started early. This time with runners at first and second, with one out in the bottom of the first. Alora Franco steps up and gets one more of those home runs. This one over the right field wall, and it's quickly three nothing. I mean, so they they really showed they get out there in front pretty pretty regularly now. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, they get the uh, offense going really quickly, which is good because uh, you start to give those uh, pitchers uh, a lead. And I've, I've been saying throughout the season that, you know, if the offense would only give the pitchers a lead, the pitchers would probably settle in a little bit better and, and, and pitch a little bit better. And uh, that's kind of not turned me out to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of pitchers, Beavis Ortiz starts one of his weaker performances with promise as he strikes Preston Adonimus out to close the top of the second. Then, at the bottom of the inning, Buster Biggs gets a hold of one, placing it out in the center field, and the runner from second scores, putting the B-Wolves out in front by four. It was starting to look like it would be a one-sided game, Pete. I mean, I was thinking, boy, we, maybe we got this all wrapped up. I was kind of hoping the same thing, yeah. <laughs> Ortiz then racks up his second K, this time against Smash Willow to start the fifth inning, and then Slip Vanderwick to start the sixth. But that was a pivotal inning with two runners on and two outs. Filet Jones does what he does so well when he punishes his misplaced curveball, barely clearing the center field wall, bringing the sirloins to within one run. We've seen this too often. The Beagles have two outs and just one more to go when they give up crucial runs. I don't know what they have to do differently in these situations, but they have to do something. Yeah, and, and one of the other things we noticed, uh, at you know, you go from the bottom of the second, B-Wolves putting the fourth run on the board, you go from that to the sixth inning, and, and the B-Wolf offense couldn't really muster anything, just couldn't get anything going after that second inning. And, and, and like you say, for a team like the Sirloins, um, they can change the complexity of a game with with one swing of the bat, which which Filet Jones showed, um, and and all of a sudden you 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 know what you think is a comfortable lead becomes, uh, you know, a, a, just a you know a hair's hair's width. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, and they got to clamp down defensively, um, it, like this in the top of the seventh when Will Rig Willard Wiggins drives in a runner from third, tying the game up at four apiece. And soon after, Boomer Platoon pinch hits this looper in the left field, bringing a runner in from second. And the Sirloins fight their way back into the lead. Five unanswered runs beat. Yeah, yeah, that was, we were both kind of stunned at that point. Um, and still, still the offense, no offense from the B-Wolves. So uh, it goes from, again, it goes from being very exciting in the first two games to the next, you know, five innings they do nothing nothing at all <laughs> yeah that was all we'd see of ortiz as winter comes in to relieve him and gets right to work dropping lloyd cook in the seventh but in the eighth smash rillo gets into it with this shallow right field pop-up that should have been caught scoring the runner from third it looked like there may have been some miscommunication there Pete. there was <laughs> plain and simple <laughs> 
The Beebles <laughs> get closer to evening things up in the bottom of the ninth when struggling sirloin reliever Franzilla walks Laurel Franco with the bases loaded, making it just a 6-5 sirloin's lead. But the curtain closes with the next batter as Billy the Boink steps up and pops this one out into right field into the glove of a ready hammer long ballo. And the sirloins take the second of two meetings with these two teams, coming just one game closer to a first place tie with the Beebles. I don't even know what it looks like if we lose tonight. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I mean, you, you shudder to think. And uh, yeah, that ninth inning was kind of strange. The uh, the sirloin uh, closer. I think it was the closer, wasn't it? Uh, came up and uh, walked a couple of uh, of hitters in that ninth inning. So he, he yeah. walked the bases loaded. Then he walked in a run. So he he was really struggling. Yeah. Um, so it really came down to the wire there. But uh, yeah, we need this one. You know, there's no two ways about it. We can't, uh, if we come out of this and uh, we're on the uh, the the wrong side of this one, uh, there's, I think this is going to be a challenge. We're, we're talking about nine games left. Um, actually, eight eight after this one, right? Yeah. Well, yeah with but... eight games left and us now tied for first, and uh, uh, I don't know what the Sirloin's run differential is. That would be a good there's thing to a kind negative of take a look ni- at. There's a negative 19, yeah, to our, so they, yeah, anybody yeah. beats it. Everybody in our division has a negative run differential, but, yeah, we're only one game ahead of the Nemesis and the Sirloin's, only two ahead of the, Her- two and a half of the Herbisaurs and the Waterboats, so it's, yeah, we got to be winning. We got to be winning these games big. So that brings us to today's game. It's a regular season game, 35 of 44. The Sirloins are 14 to 20 extreme power hitters, as we mentioned in the last game. They really excel at power, speed. They're solid at defense, and they got really good rotation. The Beebles, 15 to 19 contact specialists with really good contact and really good rotation. And they're, they got plenty of speed, and, and they're good at defense as well. They're going to have to clamp down a little bit more today. They're going to look at the starting pitcher, the right-hander, Bugsy Snokes. He's going to be taking the bump for the sirloins today. St. Louis, he throws the ball hard and puts pretty good movement on it, and he's pretty accurate as well. He's got a 3-3 and record on the season and a 3-6-4 ERA with a 1-4-5 whip. Yes, yeah, sir. And when you look at the sirloins and you see their, their uh, bullpen, uh, you really want to try and get to the starting pitcher as soon as possible so you can get to that weaker bullpen. Bullpen. Uh, uh, as Tommy pointed out. Uh, notable players for the Sirloins. Kat stands at first base, has uh, an amazing amount of power. She's a better than average contact hitter. She's got about average speed on the base pass. Um, she's hitting 333 for the season with 10 home runs. And when you look at the league leaders in offense, her name is somewhere on almost every one of those lists. So Cat yeah. Stanza is a dangerous hitter. I think in the last game, the B-Wolves did a pretty good job of, of keeping her under wraps. Um, but the second guy, Philae Jones, the left fielder, he's locked in. He's got amazing power, uh, less than average contact, and less than average speed. He's hitting 294, and he's gone up to 10 home runs after that three-run bomb that he hit in the last game. And then uh, Hammerlong Balio, the right fielder, he's tense. Uh, again, amazing power. All of these uh, sirloin hitters can go deep on you. He's got better than average um, ability to connect. Um, and he's got about average speed on the base. Pass. He's in 297 with three home runs on the season. Yeah, I can tell you, Pete, Philae Jones is old school cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just hate playing against him. Starting on the mound for the, the B Wolves, their southpaw, uh, Deshaun Levon, the left hander, he throws the ball uh, not, not as hard or, or with as much movement as most other pitchers, but he's pretty accurate. He's got a 2 and 3 record on the season, so he's hoping to even that up tonight, today. Uh, the five seven nine ERA and a one five eight WHIP. Yes, sir. And the notable players going for the B Wolves. This uh, we recognize this crew. This uh, locked in first baseman Laura Franco. She's got amazing power, uh, great ability to connect at home plate. She's got great speed on the base pass. She's hitting three eighty one with four home runs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, who's been playing lights out for us for a while. He has uh, really good power. He's got better than average ability to connect, and he's got really good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 394 with six home runs. And uh, and then uh, the walk queen of the league, <laughs> Bertha Banks at third base. Uh, third base. Uh, she's locked in. <laughs> she's got better than average power, better than average ability to connect, and uh, she's got about average speed. She's hitting 301 with three home runs. Which, I mean, again, Bertha Banks over 300 after struggling so long uh, during the regular season, and now and now she's uh, 
seems to be putting it together, Tommy, just in time, you know? <clears throat> she does, she does. This is this will be exciting getting the starting lineup from the assistant coach right now, and it looks like this. Starting off uh, the batting order is going to be Freddie Knox, who will play second base today. Uh, Freddie Knox is playing second because Hanley Dexterous is out, like we mentioned. Billy the Boink will follow him second right field. He'll bat second, batting third, Buster Biggs in left field. Here's quiz again. Pete, who's ba who bats fourth cleanup? That's Alora Franco that at first a, base. That is Alora Franco. She's locked in. Freddie Knox is also locked in. You know who else is locked in? Bertha Bank. She'll bat fifth and play third base today. Magic Moore will bat sixth and play center field at shortstop. We got Gina Torrens again filling in for, for Hanley Dexterous, who is still injured uh, from that, that pulled hamstring. Unfortunately, Gina Torrens is tense as well, so we're hoping she busts out of her funk today and gets a, gets a few hits. Uh, catching behind the plate will be Eliza Peck, who's recently recently doping. <laughs> we're trying to try to do a little something to get her get her uh, kick started here. And Deshaun Levon, who uh, who will be on the mound again. Deshaun Levon throws the four finger, the two finger, the slider, and the changeup. And I think we're getting ready to go here. We we'll welcome the fans from Rail Export, and we sure. will throw you out to the field. Beautiful day. They got the uh, roof open. Yes. Ready for some bait? We got to win this, Pete. Let's take these sirloins, man. Let's do it. We had them last time. We let up on them, but we won't this time. Mm -hmm. Going for the sirloins today in Red Rock Park. Going to be stands at first base, along with Valio in right field. Cook at second base. Jones in left field. Hayat at short. Platoon at third base. Rillo in center field. Adonimus catching and Snugs pitching. Donimus looks like he's hurting a little bit. Coming up at the top of the first, Cat Stanza, Hammerlong, Balio, and Lloyd Cook, and Deshaun, La Deshaun Lavon is setting up shop on the pitcher's mound. Get ready to get the first one going here. Cat Stanza, fan of the outside pitch. She's hitting 333 with 10 home runs, five RBIs. Oh, I got, I got, I got lag. Wow, I got lag. That's. It's not good. That one's high. Ball one. One and oh. That's in there for called strike. Evens up to count at one. Cat stand up playing in first base for the sirloins. <laughs> Allen's driven foul along the first baseline up in the upper deck. One ball, two strikes. Stanza has fallen behind in the count. Allen's outside. Two balls, two strikes. There's a shot. That's going into center field, all the way back to the wall. Magic Moore picks it up, throws it in quickly to Gina Torrance, who gets it to Freddie Knox at second base, but Stanza with a leadoff right double. Hammerlong Valio, the right fielder, is tense and fit. He's in 297, three home runs, 11 RBIs. Harris hit hard along the third base line, out of play. No balls, one strike. Stanza. Has to get back as Levon takes a look back at second base. Oh, no. That's Come on. Hit deep. That's gone into right field. That's in the stands. And Longbalio has taken Levon into the right field stands. He's taken him 384 feet. Longbalio's fourth home run and 13th RBI of the season. And very quickly, the Sirloins jump out to a 2 to nothing lead. Lloyd Cook, the second baseman, is stepping in. He's hitting 252 on the season, four home runs, 11 RBIs, no outs in the top of the first. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. That's inside. That one's inside. Ball one. Count is even at one. That's fouled off hard into the dugout along the first baseline. One ball, two strikes. Lloyd Cook is behind in the count. That one's outside. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes to Lloyd Cook. Allen's outside, ball three. Count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes. That's a roller. Oh, woo. To Freddie Knox, picks it up, and he makes the throw, but not in time. Lloyd that Cook was able to outrun it. Fielder. It looked he as though Lalonde was going to pick that one up, but uh, did not. So there's a runner at first, no outs. Filet Jones, the dangerous Filet Jones, that's popped up on the in uh, infield. Deshaun Lavon. Steps to his right, left, and makes the catch. First out. The Lay Jones fly down in the infield. 
Cook is still standing at first base with one out. He's got a lot of speed. Stepping into the batter's box, Madoka Hayata, the shortstop, takes the first pitch for a cold strike. She's hitting 235. That one's outside. Count evens up at one. She's got two home runs, 19 RBIs. That's popped up into right field. The boink's going back, makes the catch, gets the ball in to Knox, who gets it to Torrance at second to hold the runner at first. So Cook still standing at first with two outs, though. Boomer platoon to third baseman steps in. He's got good power versus left-handed pitching. He's in 250 on the season with two home runs. 15 RBIs. He takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. That one's a little ball one. One and one. Cook has speed over at first. He's taken off. And the throw is not in time. And Lloyd Cook was able to steal second. The count is one ball, two strikes with two outs to Platoon. And that's in there for called third strike. And Platoon goes down on strikes. But the sirloin strike first, they get two runs on three hits as we head into the bottom of the first. Freddie Knox, Billy LeBoink, and Buster Biggs is going to take a look at Bugsy Snugs. Now Come on, Freddie. Boy, Freddie we got to do something here, guys. Yes, sir. Freddie Knox up hitting 365 on the season. Like he said, who gets really hits it down the left side. Foul. On the count. Smashes that in the right center field. It's going to land in there. And they're going to chase it back. He's rounding triple. second. He's going all the way to third. Smash Willow making the throw. And that's going to be a stand up triple, Pete. Way to, way to go, Freddie Knox. Nice leadoff triple. Okay. Billy LeBoyne, the right fielder, stepping in. He's neutral and fit. It favors the high pitch. He's hitting 340 in the season with three home runs and 18 RBIs. Takes the first pitch outside. Ball one. That's in there for called strike one and one. There's a smash to the second baseman, picks it up. Cook throws the stands at a retire LaPointe, but Freddie Knox comes in, cutting the uh, lead in half. All right. Two to one. Way to get the run in there quickly. Buster picks it in 394. Oh, hits that hard, but it's going to be caught the warning track in center field by Smash Rillo. Two down. Alora Franco, the first baseman, she's locked in and fit. 381 on the season with four home runs, 16 RBIs. One of the notable players takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. That one's low. All one. There's a smash to Cook over at second base. He picks it up, makes the throw to Stanza for the third out. But the B-Wolves get one run on one hit, so it's Searloins 2, B-Wolves 1. Coming up in the second, Smash Rillo, Preston Adonimus, and Bugsy Snugs. Levon threw 21 pitches with a strikeout and gave up three hits in his half of the first field. inning. Number 71. Smash Rillo hitting 250. Let's see, Deshaun Levon is 21 pitches in that first inning. Hoping to, hoping to uh, reel that in here. That was the first pitch in there for a strike, going on the count to Smash Rillo. Second one's a strike. Nice change up outside corner. 0-2. He's got ahead of him. Gets a signal from Eliza Peck. Winds up. Let's it go. Hit hard to left field. Buster Biggs makes a diving catch. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> nice <laughs> catch. <laughs> oh boy. Boy, he took off at just the right time. Preston Adonis up hitting 325 on the season. The four home runs, 12 RBIs. Boy, that was going to be extra bases if he didn't grab that. Inside corner just misses ball one to Adonimus. 1 0 the count. Top of the second, 2 1 sirloins. That one outside corner, strike one. Rounded up a one apiece. Number 29 winding up, throwing it in. Swinging to miss strike two. Hoping to get a second strikeout or something. Good contact against right handers, says Adonimus. Oh, that one gets away. They're going to first. The throw gets that second out. Boy, that one, that one in the dirt. She had to chase it down. He almost made that. He did, yeah. That guy was pretty close there. Bugsy Snugs is hitting 143, the pitcher. He's got a little bit more power than than most pitchers would. That one high and outside, ball 1-0 and to Snugs. Two outs, hoping to get out of this. It's Sean LeVon before his 30th pitch is a strike. Hopefully he can close it out here soon. 1-1-2. One, one, Swinging him at strike two to Bugsy Snugs. Next one. Hit hard to LeVon. is going to pick it up. He knocked it down over to first. Three down. All right, 
So no runs, no hits, no errors in that inning. Bertha Banks, Magic Moore, and Gina Torrens going to face Snugs, who threw nine pitches in that first inning, gave up one hit. The score is Sirloins 2, B Wolves 1. Bertha Banks, the most walked player on the B Wolves. She's locked in and fit, hitting 301. What, three home runs and 11 RBIs? That one just misses outside. Ball one to Bertha Banks. Boogie Snugs gets a scratch, throws his 11th pitch. She pops that one up. That's going to be an easy out in right center field. Smash World brings yep. it in first out. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. Got good connection versus left handed pitching. He's hitting 342 on the season with three home runs, 14 RBIs. Takes the first pitch to catch. It's up. Line drive to Stanzo, who picks it up, makes the toss over to first to get Magic Moore. Gina Torrance comes up hitting 245 with one. Uh, one home run of the season, three RBIs. Hoping to get out of a, 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 a streak here, a bad streak. First one's in the first strike. Wow. Pops that one up. It's going to be one, two, three. Just behind the mound. Okay. Oh, Hayata pulls that in. Yep, one, two, three. Um, as we head into the top of the third, Cat stands a one for one with a double. Hammer along Balio, one for one with a home run. And Lloyd Cook, one for one. Lavon's at 32 pitches with two strikeouts and giving up three hits. Cat Stanja neutral and fit. She favors the outside pitch. She's a dangerous offensive weapon. Takes the first pitch inside for a called ball uh, strike. <laughs> I'm making up my own game. Allen's outside ball one. One and one to Stanza. Hmm. Allen's outside as well. Ball two, two and one. Falling behind in the count. That's fouled off hard into the sirloin dugout along the third baseline. Two balls, two strikes to Cat Stanza. That's in there for called third strike, and Levon is starting to get on a roll here a little bit. His third strikeout against one of the most powerful offensive hitters in the league. Hammerlong Balio, one for one with a home run. Two RBIs on the day. Oh. He takes that one, and that's gone deep to center field. And Jeez. it's gone. Longbalio two for two with two home runs. That one traveled 424 feet. That's his fifth home run and 14th RBI of the season. And the score has gone three one now sirloins the in the top of the third. Lloyd, Lloyd Cook, the Cook. second baseman, steps in. He's one for one with a single. Boy, these guys play two, us two, like it's playoff yeah. baseball. That's in there for called strike. Well, for them it is. This is their opportunity to get in first place. That's fouled off hard along the first baseline, and Cook is in the hole 0-2. A swing and a miss, and Cook goes down on strikes. That's four, I believe, for Levon. Two outs, bases loaded. Filet Jones, the left fielder, stepping in. He's locked in and fit. 0 for 1 in the day. There's Gosh. a shot, and that's going deep. Jeez. Deep, deep. That's out of the park, folks. Oh. That is way out. Oh, and Phile yes. Jones has left the grounds here, and that's gone 477 feet. That's his 11th home run and 28th RBI of the season, and the sirloins now 4-1 to one as Madoka Hayata, the third baseman, steps in. She's 0-1 for one in the day. What the heck? Two outs, top of the third. That's in there for called strike to Hayata. Hayata playing shortstop for the Sirloins. That's hit to Freddie Knox on the ground. He picks it up, makes the throw to Franco to retire the side. But the uh, Sirloins pick up two more runs on two hits. And it's Eliza Peck, Deshaun Levon, and then Freddie Knox, who's one for one with a triple, going to face Snugs, who's thrown 14 pitches going into the third inning. He's only given up one hit. Man, that Eliza home run. Peck, by Philly Jones. That thing, yeah, that thing was gone. 100. Uh, Peck is hitting 171 on the season. Takes the first pitch for a cold strike. That one's popped up into uh, left field, and it's just foul out of play. No balls, two strikes to Peck. That one's outside. Ball one. That one's low. Count evens up at two. Two balls, two strikes. That one's high. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Oh, why is she hitting it? And there's a ground ball up the middle, oh. and that's getting into center field for a clean single. And Eliza Peck is on base. 
and she made Snugs throw some pitches, which was awesome. Yeah. Because <laughs> he had 14 pitches going into the third. That's Boy, if Deshaun LeVon could take this one out and bring us back to within one run. High inside ball one to Deshaun LeVon. He's got a slow runner at first base. One no the count. That one's in it for a strike. One apiece. Bottom of the third, four, one, sirloins. It's going to be a pop-up. Is it going to land? Nope. Smash Rilla comes over, grabs it. Peck's got to come back to first. First down. One out, Freddie Knox. He's locked in and fit. One for one with a triple. Let off the game with a triple. He's hitting 375 on the season. Eliza Peck with no speed at first base, so she's not a threat to steal. First pitch to Knox is inside for a ball. That one's a low. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Freddie Knox. That's in it for a cold strike. Two, ball, two balls, one strike. That one's high. Three balls and a strike with one out to Freddie Knox. Fouls that one off hard along the first baseline into the stands. Three balls, two strikes. There's a shot. Freddie Knox has lifted that one to left field. Oh, and it's going to just come up short. And I had Eliza Peck running <laughs> for some stupid reason. Oh, oh Eliza play. Peck, what are you doing? That was dumb. That was dumb. I was watching the ball, and I, had, I just realized I had my finger on the button. Uh Sirloin's four, Beatles one, Boomer Platoon, Smash Rillo, and somebody else coming up. Boomer Platoon. Boomer Platoon's 0 for 1. He's got power against these southpaws. And uh, well, there's already been a couple home runs today, so Levon's going to be careful. He's not having a good day. He's throwing his 45th pitch in the fourth inning right here. That one makes it in for a strike. Nice slider. Oh, and the count to Platoon. Fans here hoping to get back in this game. Inside corner, check swing strike. Two good strikes by Levon. He seems to do better every other inning. <laughs> so on the inside, popped up in the center field. Magic Moore is going to find that one, waving everybody off. Easy out into the glove. One down. Now batting the center fielder. The other center fielder, Smash Rillo, comes up. He's 0 for 1 today. Standing back in the right hand batter's box. Looking, looking like a race car driver. Watches his first pitch from Levon come in and misses inside. Ball one. We'll know the count to Smash Rillo. Helen misses outside. And Sean Levon, what's he going to throw for his 50th pitch in the fourth inning? Strike in the upper right hand corner. Two finger. That one's in there. Strike two. Quickly, he's even things up now. Two and two. One out. Low pressure situation for Deshaun. Winds up inside. Hit hard to Freddie Knox. He's going to pick it up. Easy toss to first. Two down. And it's Preston Donimus, 0 for 1. Looks like he could punch the ball. He's a good power hitter. First pitch by Levon outside, misses the ball. The outfield's going to go back a little bit further for the Adonimus man. Ooh. That one misses a pie. Ball 2, 2-0 two oh to Adonimus. He's not 100% fitness. Check swing ball 3, and Levon's having a hard time finding the zone here. I would imagine Adonimus doesn't swing at this, but he does swing and a miss. He thought it was going to be meat. Bless you, Dijon Levon. Three and one. He's got to get two more strikes in there. Take your base. Oh, he oh, walks come him on. five. <laughs> Adonimus at first base, and Bugs and Snugs coming up. This might be better anyway. Bugs and Snugs locked in, though. He can hit the I would have rather gotten Adonimus out and then let off the next inning with yeah. the pitcher. Swing and a miss, strike one, the inside corner. <clears throat> John Levon would like to get him swinging with strike two. Hopefully he gets him with his 60th pitch. There he is, three-pitch strikeout. Way to go, Deshaun. <coughs> all right, coming up in the bottom of the fourth, Billy LeBoyne, Buster Biggs, and Alora Franco all 0 for the day. Snugs is at 29 pitches and giving up two hits. Sirloins four, B-Wolves one. Sirloins have out-hit the B-Wolves five to one. Billy LeBoy go for one on the day with an RBI. Likes his pitch up top. First pitch to Billy LeBoy makes it in for a strike. Over on the count. Second pitch. Oh, hits, why? Reaches out, hits it to the third base. Platoon picks it up, throws it. One down. Buster Biggs, the left fielder. He's tense but fit. He's 0 for 1 on the day, hitting 392 with six home runs and 20 RBIs. Takes the first pitch for a called ball. That was outside. Ball one. One and oh. That's in there in the uh, one and one. That's in there for called second strike. One ball, two strikes. 
Uh, Allen's outside, evens up the count at two and two. There's a smash. That's going to drop into right field. Longvalio picks it up and gets it in to Cook, who will run it in. So Buster Biggs with a long single. There you go. Laura Franco locked in, 0 for 1 on the day. One of the better batting averages in the league. Takes a first pitch outside strike one. There goes Buster Biggs for second. The throw, not in time. He's leading the league in stolen bases now, and he's in scoring position with two strikes. Delora Franco hits a line drive to first uh, right field. I'm sorry, Lombardo gets it, throws it in, keeps um, Buster Biggs at second base. All right, Bertha Banks, the third baseman. She's locked in and fit, but she's 0 for 1 in the day. She's hitting 298. She leads the B-Wolves with 11 walks. That one's low, ball 1, 1-0. One oh. Snugs up to 40 pitches. That's high. Allen's high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Bertha Banks. There's a smash. That's going into left field. Filet Jones picks it up. Buster Biggs gets the third. So you got Bertha Banks at first. Buster Biggs at third with two outs and Magic Moore stepping in. And we're going to need that. We're going to need some offense for Magic Moore here. We, don't, we can't get it out. He got two outs, bottom of the fourth. It's right past the mound. He's going to get that in. He's going to get the run in, Pete. Good single by Magic Moore. It's now 4-2. Way to go. Way to go. Yes, sir, Gina Torrens. The tense Gina Torrens playing uh, shortstop for the uh, B-Wolves today in place of Hanley Dexteras. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. Allen's low, ball one. Evened up the count, one and one. Runners at first, first and second mm -hmm. with uh, two outs. And everybody's running, but it's a pop fly to Hayata in the shallow center field for the third out. But the B-Wolves put one more on the board, so it's Sirloins four, B-Wolves two. Cat stands a hammer long ballio and Lloyd Cook in a face Levon, who's thrown 60 pitches with five strikeouts. The first baseman. Stands as one for two with a double. She's a fan of the oh, you said she's a fan of the outside pitch. I don't know how many times we can say it. We'll say it one more time. She's a fan of the outside pitch. That one's outside. Ball one. One and oh. No outs to be a fan in the top of, of the fifth. I guess so. Allen's fouled off into the stands along the third baseline. One ball, one strike. Ball inside. Allen's inside. Ball two. Two balls, one strike to Cat Stanza. That's in there for a called strike. Evens up to count at two and two. Levon delivers. That's she just got enough to push that foul along the third baseline. Two balls, two strikes. We'll do it again. That's in there for called third strike, and Stanza goes down on ca on strikes. The dangerous hammer long ball, the right fielder, he's neutral and fit. Two for two, two home runs, three RBIs. There's nobody on base, and there's one out. That one's outside, ball one. Long ball low hitting 307 with five home runs. That one was high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to long ball low. Allen's fouled off along the third baseline. Out of play. Two balls, one strike. Levon delivers. There's a smash into center field. Magic Moore picks it up and gets it into Torrens at second. Longbalo has reached. Hit safely three of uh, all three times at bat. Lloyd kicked the cook, the second baseman's one for two with a single. Longbalo's got about average speed over there. Levon goes over to first. Keep <laughs> Long Ballo close. One Just out. Messing with him, really. <laughs> There's a roller to Torrens. Picks it up, makes the throw to second, and over yes. to first. And they get the double play, and they end the side. So they go into the bottom of the fifth. Sirloins with a two run lead. Eliza Peck, one for one. Deshaun Levon, 0 for one. And Freddie Knox, one for two with a triple. Snugs is at 46 pitches, and he's given up five hits. Now Come on, team. Eliza Peck, one Number for one on the day with a single. She's up to 194 on the season. She can get over 200 if she's not careful, Pete. Watch that first one. It's like good patience, Eliza Peck. One and oh the count. The other one, the same. Ooh, strike. I thought it was the same spot. One apiece. Strike two, and she falls behind. One and two, bottom of the fifth. That one's way low and away. Good patience still to a piece. Bugsy Snugs through his 50th pitch, and Peck hits it up the middle, another single. Looks like she's she's doing better, Pete. 
Yes, sir. Two for two so far. Deshaun Levon, the starting pitcher. He's 0 for 1, hitting 273 on the season with three RBIs. Peck with no speed at first base, not a threat to steal. That's fouled off along the third baseline. There's a smash to Lloyd Cook, who pulls it out of the air. Peck is able to get back to first, but there's one out. And Freddie Knox is one for two with a real nice triple to start the game off. He's hitting 369. That one loops in there for that strike. Oh, on the count to Freddie Knox. One out, 4 2 in the bottom. Sliding Cook picks it up, toss to second for the first out. Doesn't get the second one. So it's a single by Knox, but a peck goes back to the dugout. Billy LeBoint, the right fielder. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And he's in there. He stole second base. Uh, Freddie Knox has stolen second base. The count to Billy LeBlanc is one ball, one strike with two outs. That one's outside. Two balls, one strike. There's the shot, and that's going into left center field, and everybody's on their horse. LeBlanc is around. He's pulling into second with a double, yes. and Knox comes around to score, making the score 4-3. Way to go, LeBoink, and up comes Buster Biggs, who's one for two of this single. Buster Biggs had put us ahead with a home run here, Pete. The pressure mounts. Ooh, check swing, strike one. Side corner, home on the count to Buster Biggs. That one's a little ball one. You got Billy LeBoink at second base. He's not in threat of stealing anything. Ooh, big swing and a miss to Buster Biggs, strike two. That one hits, but it bounces off the pitcher, scooped up by Cook at second, throws it, he just oh. gets on that first. That was close. That was, that was. But the B-Wolves pick up another run, making it 4-3 as we head into the top of the sixth. Filet Jones, 1 for 2 with a home run. Madoka Hayata, 0 for 2. And Boomer Platoon, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Levans at 71 pitches with now 6 strikeouts. Filet Jones. Jones is locked in. 1 for 2, like he said, he hit that monster home run in the third inning. I, I The window shook. Hits that one hard down the line. But Franco picks it up, but it's foul. I don't want to count to Filet Jones. He's an RBI, man. Strike two, 0-2. Oh He's quickly ahead of the count to Filet Jones. It's a good spot to be. Sean LeVon looking for the right signal. Winds up. That one's popped up in the center field. Magic Moore running back, waving everybody off. Did a little pirouette. <laughs> One out. There you go. <laughs> now he's Madoka just trying to show up Filet Jones. <laughs> Madoka Hayata. He feels good after that. Get some confidence back. So 75th pitch to Madoka right here. That's it hard in the left field. Billy LeBoink over to get it. Grabs it. Good good day for uh, Buster Biggs, I'm sorry, in left field. Buster Biggs that. Yes, not, not at all related to Billy LeBoink. Bust, Boomer Platoon comes up. He's over two. He's got power against these lefties. These leftists. Hits that one oh, hard no. to Billy LeBoink. And is that going to be another one? Yeah, at the wall. Grabbed at the Oof. wall. For the third. Oh. Oosh. Yeah. All right, coming up in the bottom of the sixth, Laura Franco's 0 for 2. Bertha Banks 1 for 2. Magic Moore 1 for 2. Snugs at 63 pitches, and he's given up 7 hits. Beowulf's now out hitting the Sirloin 7 to 6, we but trailing in this. by one run. Yes, sir. Laura Franco is neutral and fit. 0 for 2 on the day, hitting 375, though, on the season. Mm. Snugs delivers. That's a sh Ground ball to stands at first base who runs over, steps on the bag to retire Franco. 0 for 3. Franco. One out. Boy. Bertha Banks locked in. 1 for 2 with a single. Bertha's got to do something. Come on, Bertha. She, she's the one. Ball 1. Is this going to be another walk for Bertha Banks? 1 0 the count. That one makes it a first strike. 1 apiece. Bottom of the 6. 4 3 sirloins. Strike 2. I thought that was a little high inside. 1 and 2 the count to Bertha. Ball 2 low. 2 and 2. Outside corner ball three, good patience by Bertha Banks. Now full up three, three and two, and that's an interesting walks again, Pete. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> good eye for Bertha Banks. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. He's got good connection versus left-handed pitching. One for two with a single. Banks does not have a lot of uh, speed at first base, so she's not going to take off. That's in there for called strike. There's a roller over to Hayata. He'll flip it to second, and Cook will make the throw, but not in time for the double play, but Bertha Banks is out going to second, so there's a runner at first with two outs. Come on, Gina Torrens, 0 for 2. She's much better than this. I don't know why she's been doing so poorly. 
First pitch to there for a strike to Gina Torrens. Bottom of the six, four, three. Blue Wolves got to get back in this, and they can. Two quick strikes to Gina Torrens. That one way up and inside. Ball one. Good patience. That one's in there. She pops that up. Left side. It's going back, but it's waving it off. It's Nash Rillo. It's going to grab it for that third out. Yes, sir. No runs. A couple of one, no hits. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the seventh. Smash Rillo, 0 for 2. Adonimus, 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Bugsy Snugs, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Lafon's up to 76 pitches, 6 now strikeouts, 1 walk, and giving up 7 hits. 71. I think it's 7. Mm -hmm. Smash Rillo, the center fielder, is 0 for 2 today. He's hitting 231 on the season. Sirloins with a 4 3 lead over the B Wolves. That's in there for called strike. Strike 1. That's popped up along the uh, foul line. Eliza Peck just steps back, makes the catch for the first out. Laura Franco. And, oh, Laura Franco, sorry. Uh, Preston Adonimus, the catcher, steps in. 0 for 1 with a walk today. One out, base is empty. As Levon settles in to make a 79th pitch here. Swing and a miss. Adonimus offered up at that, but was unable to catch up to it. No balls, one strike. Swing and a miss by Adonimus again, and he's in the hole, 0 and 2, with one out. Levon delivers. That's in there for called third strike, and Adonimus goes down on strikes. Two outs, Bugsy snugs the starting pitcher steps, and he's 0 for 2 in a day. He hits 125 on the season with an RBI, so he's not completely without ability. There's a roller. It's going to be picked up by Freddie Knox, who will make the throw over to Eliza. Franco, Laura Hello, Franco. Franco. <laughs> Get talking too fast sometimes. Bottom of the seventh, Eliza Peck, two for two. Deshaun Levant, 0 for two. And Freddie Knox, one for three with a triple. Snugs is at 76 pitches, giving up a walk and seven hits. Did you say Eliza Peck, two for two? <laughs> Eliza Peck is two for two with two singles. Her average is up to 216, Tommy. No Jeez. home runs and two RBIs. One game, she turned it around. That's going up the middle for three for three, Tommy. Nice. Eliza Peck with a leadoff single. Again, I wish she had some more speed because... <laughs> <laughs> we can always pinch run for her. No, no. That's Des true. That's Deshaun true. Levon locked on, and he's going to hit. He's a power hitter. He can take one over and put us in the hit, in the lead. Strike one to Deshaun Levon over on the count. Now when he pops oh, up, no. that's going to be an easy out. Madoka Hayata pulls that in for first. Not a good at bat for Deshaun Levon. Freddie Knox, one for three with a triple. He's in 364. He's locked in and fit. Come on, Deshaun. I mean, uh, Freddie, you started off really well. Come on, let's get something going here. There's a shot up the middle in the center field. Eliza Peck's going to pull into second, and man, it looks like she's just <laughs> crawling out there. <laughs> I think she's on all fours. <laughs> Billy LeBoig's coming in, one for three with a double and two RBIs. So uh, good uh, pressure mounting here with only one out. Oh, he swings a day early, pulls that, gives that a souvenir on the third base side, over on the count. That one's hit hard, and that's going to be into the gap. And uh, they're going to hang up. She's going to hang up. There's no way she's making it home. Yeah. Uh, so bases are loaded with one out. And Buster Big steps in. He's the left fielder. Neutral and fit one for three with a single. He's hitting 393 on the season with six home runs and 20 RBIs. First pitch is in there for called strike. No balls, one strike with one out. There's a smash, and that's going into um, right field. Eliza Peck is crossing the plate, <laughs> ties the game up at four. Yes. Four, four. With only one out, and Laura Franco's up. She's 0 for 3. It's, oh, there goes Bugsy Snugs. We've seen all we're going to see of him today. He's tense, and he's lost a lot of accuracy. The pressure's way up, and in comes Shay D, the relief pitcher. She's got a 7.01 ERA. A 1.56 whip at 36 Ks. The ERA doesn't look that good, but the Ks do. Uh, she throws the ball pretty hard, uh, puts enough movement on it. She's really accurate. So uh, she's ball prone. She throws a four finger cut finger, the curveball, and the changeup, Pete. So Laura Franco's got a potential grand slam situation. She crushes it. That's it, Pete. Is it a. Is it. Is it. Is it. Yes! Grand slam home run on the first pitch. Laura Franco. Finally gets on the board a 360 foot grandish slamish. And she gets she gets all the stuff, Pete. Oh man, what a what a play. And the Beagles are back in it like that. Bertha Banks, the third baseman's locked in and fit. Walked her last time up. 
takes the first pitch for a ball. Ball one. Pushes that one foul along the third baseline. Evens up the count. One ball, one strike in the bottom of the seventh. That's a smash. It's high. It's going deep. Is it deep enough? And yes, it is. <laughs> Bertha Banks has <laughs> just hit a home run. Bertha Banks went 460, 406 feet in her 12th RBI. That's her fourth home run of the season. And I think the B Wolves are putting it on the uh, sirloins. Letting them know they're not the only ones who can go deep. Boy, they did not want to lose this game, Pete. Magic more because the crowd's really amped up now. Look at everybody standing up out there in the field. Hits that one hard over the head. And the third base, he's going to he's gonna round first. He's trying for second. He slides in there and makes the double. I was worried he was going to make that, Pete. Whoa, B-Wolves. Right. Gina Torrens is 0 for 3. She's tense and fit. 0 for 3 on the day. She's playing shortstop for Hanley Dexteres, who's been injured. Bunts lays down a sacrifice. Everybody's in. Um, Gina Torrens is out at first, but uh, Buster Biggs is standing at third base now. All of a sudden, this looks good. Liza Peck's hitting 237 now in the season. Pete, she's three for three on the day. She's guaranteed to get on base. Takes first pitch in there for a strike. She's got to run her third base, hoping to make it a 10 4 game. Good patience. Ball one, 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 and two. At bottom of the seventh, nine, four B Wolves. Swing and a miss, strike two. Eliza Peck. Oh, Pete. Whoa, swung way late, and oh, it couldn't last forever, Pete. Strike three. Yeah, she got me with those two uh, two pitches. Uh, coming up in the top of the eighth, Cat stands a one for three with a double and two strikeouts. Long ball, you know, three for three with two home runs. And Lloyd Cook, one for three with a strikeout. Levon's at 82 pitches, seven strikeouts, a walk, and giving up six now hits. I think Levon's pitched long enough, hasn't he, Pete? He Cat's may have, yes. I think you're right. Cat stands it. He's throwing 82 pitches. Well, I mean, I don't know. I up to you. We're up, uh, we're up by five. So, yeah. let's see. He's going to start. He's going to start the inning here. Oh, Ooh, that one gets away from Liza Peck. So Levon's going to see how far he can go. Now we got that lead. Strike one. One and one to Cat Stanza. Now the, the B Wolves have a five-run lead over these sirloins. That's an easy pop up into shallow left. Gina Torrance back for it. He's got all day to get under it. Makes it grab for the first out. Now batting. Here he comes, though, the dangerous hammer long ball of three for three with two home runs, a single. He's going to hit the ball. Um, LeVon throws that inside corner, and this is ball one to hammer. It was just a beast. That one makes the outside corner one apiece. Now he's ready to play. Hammer long ball is mad at this next pitch. Here comes Sean LeVon, looks, gets the right signal from Peck, winds up, throws it in, swing and a miss. The long ball was swinging for the fences. What in two, Pete. Oh, what a day for baseball. <laughs> Fans excited. There it is. Swing and strike three. Strikes up the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd <laughs> Cook. Who is this guy? One for three with a single hit in 254. Boy, has my mood changed in the course of an inning. What an inning that way. Oh, nine to four B-Wolves. First pitch misses ball one. Sean Levon's going to finish up the eighth inning here. We. He can hang in. Maybe he can get the whole game. I don't know. At the pitches. Now he's starting to lose a little bit, though. But he's locked in. 92nd pitch. Popped up behind the plate. Eliza Peck going back. But that's going to hit the might be behind the net. Souvenir in an unlikely place for some fans behind home plate. Lloyd Cook looking in there. Strike two. We're up, not up at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Top of the eighth. 9-4. Good guys. That one's popped up down the third base side. Bertha Banks going back just behind third base. Waving him off. And that's end of eight innings, Pete. Oh, it's, as we head into the bottom of the eighth, Deshaun Levon 0 for 3. Freddie Knox 2 for 4 with a triple. Billy LeBoyne 2 for 4 with a double. Shady's thrown 10 pitches with a strikeout, giving up three hits. B Wolves 9, Sirloin's 4. Do we do we pinch here? Yes, yeah, I, I would. I was going to say. I, I didn't know if you wanted him to go a whole game or not. But, no, no, no. Uh, okay. I wanted him to get some revenge on Longbalo if he could, though. Oh, and since we were up by did. 5, I felt like, you know, yeah, he if he didn't yeah. look good against... Uh, Cat, cat stands and then we would have pulled him but yeah. all right coming out uh, Deshaun Levon after a, a pretty good day for Levon he's leaving locked in and fit we're gonna bring in Benny Balmer as the pinch hitter he's hitting 231 on the season with a home run and RBI he's feeling neutral and fit he's got uh, poor power a little bit less than average ability to connect at about average speed um, and he'll be pinch hitting for Levon Bottom of the eighth, no outs. That one's low, ball one, one and oh. 
That's in there for called strike. One ball, one strike. There's a shot. And the center field, uh, the shortstop laid out for it. Hayata um, was unable to corral it, though. So Benny Ballmer reaches safely with a single. Way to go, and Benny. Standing up first. Play it in there now. Freddie knocked two for four with a triple and a single. And unusual to see Benny Ballmer on the diamond. Good to see you, Ben. Hit hard. That's going to land in there. Texas Leaguer in the center field. Picked up by Rillo. They're going to hold everybody up at first and second. We got runners at first and second. Pete with no outs. That's right. And Billy LeBoyne, the right fielder, stepping in. He's neutral and fit. Likes the high pitch. He's two for four with a double and a single. He's hitting 345 with three home runs, 20 RBIs. That one's pushed foul along the first baseline. No balls, one strike. That one's a... Oh, and Hayata's fumbled with it. Yeah. They were able to get the, the runner at second base, but they were unable to turn two. So there's runners at first and third with one out. Buster Biggs is two for four. He's got uh, runners at first and third, as Pete said, with only one out. Check swing ball one. Good patience there by Buster Biggs. Good eye. Shady throws the second one. That one's popped up down the line. It's going to be foul. Can anyone get there? And he does. Oh. Delay Jones picks it up. Throws home just in case. Two down. <laughs> Alora Franco's locked in a bit. One for four with a home run and four RBIs. She's hitting 377 on the season with five home runs and 20 RBIs. There's a smash to Hayota, Hayata who fumbles with it. Flips it to second, but not in time, and not the relay to first, not in time. So, an infield single for Franco. Runners at first and second with a runner scoring. What a turnaround here. She's two for three, Bertha Banks. First pitch in there for a strike, on one the count. Second pitch is low, ball, one apiece. Bottom of the, now it's 10 4 of Eagles. That one's way inside, Bertha Banks. She might just watch these all and walk it on in. Ball three, three and one. What are the, now she's ball prone too. What are the odds she's going to throw two strikes? Very low. There goes Bertha Banks doing what she does so well. <laughs> so if she's not walking, she's hitting dingers. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. Two for four with a double, a single, and an RBI. Base is loaded with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Shady is at 24 pitches, make it 25. That was low and outside. Ball one. That's just, and Lloyd Cook picks it up, but not in time. <laughs> Everybody's safe. Run crosses the plate. That makes it 11 to 4. Gina Torrens stepping in. She's over. So much going on. 0 for 3 on the day. The bases are loaded. It's high pressure to Shady. First pitch is in there for a ball. She's got a throw to her. She might as well. Gina Torrens is, is not. Is doing very tense. Strike one. One and one. Oof. Swinging is a day early. Gina Torrens did not the not the woman she used to be. Inside like corner ball two. Two two two. On the eighth. Outside corner, she hits it on the ground to platoon, throws it to first, and gets her out for the third out. Out comes. But yeah. the, the uh, B Wolves pick up uh, two more runs, making it 11 to 4 as we head into the top of the ninth. Coming in uh, to replace the pinch hitter, Benny Balmer, is Tats Belfour. Belfour, a relief pitcher with a 4.54 ERA, a 1.16 whip, and 28 strikeouts. He's feeling neutral and fit. Has a little bit less than average velocity, about average junk, and a little bit less than average accuracy. Uh, pretty well rested, uh, but not fully rested. He's a little walk prone. He's got a four seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. And as we head into the top of the ninth here, Philae Jones, one for three with a home run. Madoka Hayata, 0 for three, and Boomer Platoon, 0 for three with a strikeout. Belfour just needs to get three outs here, and the game's over. Boy, eight, and the now eight runs ahead. in two innings. <laughs> yeah. Billy Jones went for three the home run. Great. Oh, he's sorry. locked in and fit. He is. Hitting 294 with 11 home runs. Belfour delivers low, ball one. 1 0. Oh. That one's outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Jones. Belfour delivers that one's in there for a cold strike. Two balls, one strike. Belfour delivers. That's fouled off along the first baseline, evening up the count. Two balls, two strikes. Jones, the most uh, dangerous offensive hitter right now. That's fouled off. Coming up here in the ninth inning, if we can retire him, that's a good sign. Swing and a miss, and Philae Jones goes down on strikes. And Madoka Hayata, who is tense but fit, who's 0 for 3 on the day, hitting 229. 
on the season, stepping in in the top of the ninth. Balfour delivers. There's a roller that's going to get to Franco, who's going to run it to herself, step on first for the second out, and Boomer Platoon, the third baseman, who's neutral and fit, has power versus left-handed pitching. He's uh, 0 for the day, stepping in against Balfour. There's a roller. Banks picks it up. Makes the throw to Franco. That's the game, folks. <laughs> and the B Wolves win it in decisive fashion, 11 to four. Oh my, wow. Tom. Oh wow. my. Wow. What, what a turnaround. And <clears throat> they did not start very good. I mean, the, the fans. There's some fans who left. <laughs> they missed out. Cause, yeah. Because they're thinking, oh, these guys are going to own us this season. But they yeah. battled, they battled, and eventually the, the, the levy broke in that sixth inning or whatever it was, the six runs. Oh. Yeah, there it well, is. Well, I think the key so, was, uh, you know, again, we, you know, the, the B-Wolf offense came out, and they were juiced, and you could tell because they were jumping on first pitches. Uh, we were, you know, talking about announcing that going into the third inning and uh, Bugsy Snugs had only thrown 14 pitches, and you're like, that's... <laughs> That you got to get this guy working more, and I think they finally started to slow down, made Snug start throwing some pitches, and yeah, like I say, the the dam just broke then in the seventh yeah. inning. Wow, what a what a President's Day for these fans! <laughs> Look at yes, it, and, and, sir. and not often you get to see um, a Grand Slam home run. We've seen a few this year, but not any for the Beagles. I don't think until this one today by Laura Franco. She was only one for five, but that one was a was a massive four run bomb and what timing. Yes, yeah, it was a great yeah, that was a great inning. That was just a great inning. On the, I mean on the other side, it was it was pretty pretty top heavy. I mean Stanza was only one for four, but she got a run. Uh, Jones was one for four, but he got that nice home run and Long Ballo, it that was it was a career day for him. Three for four, two home runs, two runs. Um just just nuts. Yeah, but he he did. He, he he got two home runs on Levon, but Levon was able to hang a K on on Long Ballo. So, yeah. I think I think he feels better about that in the long run. On yeah. our side, we got three for five knocks. He got uh, three for five Magic Moore, and then three for four Eliza Peck. What's that about? <laughs> Told you, give her we gave, we gave her a little goose with the uh, with some uh, development there. And uh, now she's, you know, her, her batting average is the same as Deshaun Levon's. So yeah. there you go. And you can get a little <laughs> something. Benny Balmer comes in to just pinch it, and he gets on and gets it crosses the plate. So we just see Benny yep. after, after a while. Uh, pitching, the game starts. Bugsy Snuggs gets the loss. He throws six in the third inning. Throws, uh, gets 11 hits off him. Seven earned runs. Walks one batter. His ERA slips to a 4-4-7. He's now three and four on the season, no longer three and three. Uh, D S D comes. Shay D comes in, throws one and two thirds innings, gets six hits off her, three more earned runs, walks a batter, gets one strikeout of her own, uh, but two home runs, two big home runs. Her ERA falls back to seven four three. She's a one zero. Yeah, and over here for the B Wolves, Deshaun Levon gets the win. He pitched eight innings, gave up six hits, four earned runs. One walk. He had eight strikeouts on the day, which is pretty, still pretty good. Yeah. Um, gave up three home runs, and his ERA jumps up to 5.56. So his ERA is heading in the wrong direction. Yeah. But his uh, his record evened up. He's got three wins now and three losses, so he's at 500. Tats Belfort comes in, doesn't get the uh, save because um, the game was pretty much out of reach yeah. at that point. But he, he pitches one inning, gets a strikeout. His ERA drops to 4.41. He's now 4, uh, well, his record is 4-0-1. Yeah. Boy, it's not often you see a starting pitcher give up three home runs and end up winning the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Players of the game, Pete, we knew, we kind of knew this was coming. Yeah, the first player of the game is uh, the uh, hammer-long ball, you know, the right fielder for the Sirloins. Three for four, two home runs, three RBIs, and he himself scored two runs, so... Uh, that's a productive day for Mr. Longballo. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, it came in a losing effort. Yeah. Well, the second star of the game, the B-minus third base woman, Bertha, the most walked <laughs> player in baseball, Bertha Banks comes up. She goes two for three. She gets a home run of her own. Good timing. That was that was the one right after Franco's, uh, and she gets that RBI and that run. Yeah. And how many walks? I think she had two walks today, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. 
So she reached base at, uh, at least four times, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the third star of the game, A minus, Alora Franco, the first baseman. Again, one for five today, which isn't uh, very good numbers, but she does hit the grand slam home run, picks up four RBIs, and scores a run herself. And those four RBIs coming at a crucial moment after just tying the baseball game with the bases loaded, the very next batter, Alora Franco. Hits immediately hits a grand slam and puts the B Wolves out ahead for that's that's huge. First you, pitch, you know, you're, first pitch, yeah, and it wasn't fighting close and either. scrapping. It was it fighting was, and scrapping just to get in, just to get even, and then she turns around very next to batter. Some lucky fans got that ball right now. That's right, Tommy G with ten hits, one home run, six RBIs, two great catches, a stolen base, and six strikeouts. He's got a fifty-two percent contribution. Pete Jay with seven hits, one home run, five RBIs, one stolen base, three strikeouts, 48%. Wow, I thought he was better than that. Well, yeah, that's pretty good, though. I mean, that, that's we both we both did very well. So, yeah, yeah, anytime you get five freaking RBIs, you know, I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, and I got to tell you, this little sidebar was fun, that diving catch in left field. That was <laughs> awesome, yeah. Hits. That was an awesome and catch. the grand slam. Well, that's fun stuff. Well, wow. Whew. Well, that, that helps out. That helps out. And so we go, our next game is going to be in San Diego against Platypi. So um, we can go ahead and simulate these ones, right? There's no games we want to go watch, right? So uh, I don't think so. You want to ta- tell the scores for this one so we can check where sure. we're at in the standings? All right, it's going to start right, with the, the Detroit, or no, I'm sorry, the, 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 te- the Texas Crocs out facing the Heaters in Detroit. All right, so the Crocs travel to meet the heaters, and it's all Crocs, eight to nothing. Sawteeth visit the Warblers. That's a curiosity division. When the Warblers take it two one, Sirloins go to visit the Outlaws, and it's Sirloins two to one. Our Herbosaurs face the Buzzards in Colorado, and it's mostly Buzzards. It's all Buzzards, uh, eight to twelve, twelve eight. And the Blowfish versus the uh, travel to see the Burners, and it's Burners four to three. So it ends like this. Pete, why don't you start us off in the Pioneer Conference? In the Pioneer Conference, mm-hmm, uh, the the uh, Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, the Moose sitting at top of the Pathfinder Division with a record of twenty-two and eleven. They are have a comfortable four-game lead over the Philadelphia Freedom, who are sitting at eighteen and fifteen, and in second place. They're in the Uncharted Division. Below that, we've got the New York Wild Pigs, are seventeen and sixteen, first place. They are also tied. With the 18 and 17 platypi, we're going to face in this next game in San Diego, Pete. So that'll be tough. They they both have a two and a half game lead against those Colorado Buzzards and the in the um, Oakland Outlaws. So there's really only one team who's back there. That's the hot corners. Yes, and then down in the Journey Division, our sister team, the Sand Cats, have a record of 23 and 12, which affords them a three and a half game lead over the Arctics who are in second place with a record of 20 and 16. Yeah, second best record in the lead though, St. Cats, right behind the Moose. Uh, over on the Explorer Conference Seafarer Division, right now it's the Oakland Go- the, or the California Gold Coats are 21 and 12, also doing great. They only have a one game lead though against the Philadelphia Frontliners who are 20 and 13. Down in our very own trade division, our B-Wolves that are with a record of 16 and 19, three games under 500, <laughs> and they're holding on to a game and a half lead over the Sirloins, who are sitting at 15 and 21, and a game and a half lead over the Nemesis, who are sitting at 14 and 20. And the B-Wolf run differential is down to a negative 22. Oof, well, that's something. Boy, yeah, we needed that win, or I don't know yeah. what, we would have been a three-way tie. With, yeah. Uh, you know, for first place, so. So yeah, that boy. <laughs> Curiosity Division to finish it off. The the San Jose Saw Teeth are twenty and sixteen, and they've got a half game lead against the Colorado Warblers, who are nineteen and sixteen. And when if you if you go to um, the season standings again there, and you go to the uh, wild card, the wild card race piece, will you? I'll tell us about the Pioneer Conference. So the division okay. leaders, you got those Moose, Sand Cats, and Wild Pigs are all in first place right now. The wild card contender, the top wild card contender, is the is the uh, Tacoma Arctics. They are uh, twenty and sixteen. They've got a half game lead against those Philadelphia Freedom, and a one game lead against the Burners and the Blowfish. So there's a lot of teams. If you take it all the way down to the Platypi, any of those guys can 
can vie for the, the wild card as well as possibly the, the first place in their divisions. Right. And then over in the Explorer Conference, the, the division leaders, the Gold Coats, the Saw Teeth, and the Bee Wolves would have a, uh, uh, you know, a guaranteed place. Uh, the wild card contender right now is the front runners, who with a record of 20 and 13 and a run differential of plus 34, have a one game lead over the Jacks, who are sitting at 19 and 14 with a uh, uh, plus 18 run differential. So, even if in case of a tie, I think the front runners would still win it by virtue of the uh, the uh, run differential. And then, of course, you got the uh, Heaters, who are a game and a half back, and then the Warblers and the Moon Stars. You know, they're only two a uh, two two and a half games back. So, I mean, there's still a lot of teams that are in play. There's still a lot of movement that can happen. Um, are the sirloins that we just played in the Nemesis, as well as the herbivores that are in our conference. Uh, I would say that it's a long shot. Sirloins and Nemesis are six and a half games out of the wild card contention, and the herbivores eight and a half games. So it would really have to take a miracle for <laughs> for those it three. Would, except when I go look at our, our schedule, there's still some baseball left to play. Uh, we have uh, how many more games here? So yeah, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They may not do the wild card, but they can still win the division. <laughs> right. That's them. that's the whole thing. Is they're going to be coming at us hard because uh, we said it before. We could say it again that the only team from our division that's getting to the playoffs is the one in first place. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the rest of them are not going to make the uh, wild card. So. Well, after this game, Pete and I are going to pack up. We're going to head out to San Diego. And uh, we're going to face the platypi. They're going to—it's going to be Japani versus Zumar, and then uh, we come home to to host the Wild Pigs. That'll be—that's a big game because those guys are are tough. So I mean, we're, we're facing two first place teams <clears throat> back to back here. The Buzzards are fighting for you know wild card spot uh, when we go out to California. That's going to be our last road trip. We go out to—I'm not California. I'm sorry, Colorado. We actually go to Colorado Springs. It'll be the first time we go out there to face the Buzzards. Ortiz will face Elwood, and then Levon will pitch again. We head out back out to um, Fort Lauderdale. We're going to be there for a couple games against the Water Bullets, a couple more division teams. So that's going to be big with Water Bullets. Water Bullets. We're back home. We host the Nemesis. That's a big one. We got a departure with the Outlaws and the Hot Corners, but uh, yeah, four home games straight. We end up with the Herbivores. It's going to be it's it's tight. It's tight. Yes, it's sir. It's hard to breathe it in is. here. It is. <laughs> Yeah, water bullets, nemesis, and herbivores. Those are those are division games. We got to win those. Well, I'm looking at just something right here uh, after the game. It looks like Poke Foster's got new contacts now, which has improved his contact. So he goes from he goes from uh, the 27 year old right field outfielder goes from a C to a C plus. He had a 76 contact rating and now he's 79. So uh, he's oh. he, he's already won. We usually we usually go with Poke uh, for pinch hitting situations. I usually do. Um, yeah. And uh, he's good there. We went with with uh, Benny Balmer today because or not Benny Balmer. Benny Balmer? Who did we go with? Yeah, yeah. we did. I think yeah. it was Benny Balmer. Because I haven't seen him in a while. We had such a big lead. We thought I'd give him a chance. He did well, but uh, yeah, I, I tend to usually lean on uh, Ruby Green. She's more of a uh, uh, a you know an even person. She's uh, not great in anything, but she's you know about about uh, moderate in everything. Yeah. Moderate power, moderate connectivity, and moderate speed. So I usually go with her. I usually go with the players who don't get much field time. Yeah, that's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Smoke Frederick lowered his asking price from twelve point one million to eleven six. Yeah. Why don't you read the next one? Because that's kind of a move. <laughs> uh, player development BioSource membership. Gina Torrens is raring to take on a new training regime, and for one million ninety four thousand nine hundred dollars, she has the ability to gain one power. Uh, plus eight fielding, um, but she'd lose two on her arm, and she has a 15% chance to gain bad jumps. For only a million bucks. <laughs> yeah. She can become a worser player. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't right. you want that? Doesn't everybody want that? Yes, yes. Well, we'll, we'll what think a game. about that on, what a, on game. a little regional flight out to San Diego. Yeah, what a turnaround. Because when that thing started off, boy, I tell you, they were getting a hold of them. And it was like, oh, how are we going to get... I, I thought at one point pulling Levon in the fourth inning or something. I thought, do I do something? He's After he gave up that, that second home run, I'm like, 
what do I do? I can't throw the guy. But uh, but I hung in there and against my better judgment, and he turned things around. And then yeah, the offense really came in. Wow, yeah, what a win! What a win, Pete. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, I guess uh, until next time when we see Beefcake McStevens, Muffin Studwick, uh, and, and Shana Rodriguez or whatever her name is, it's, we will see you in sunny San Diego, California. Until then, this is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we are saying, get out of here.